Hi, Chris Christoffi here. On my podcast, Edition 3, Relentless Life on Your Terms, with a friend of mine, Jack Bloomfield. Whenever you turn on the TV, you're always going to see this young man. He's the youngest columnist in News Corp. He did a TEDx at 16 years old. He runs a very successful e-commerce business, turning over millions of dollars. I had the privilege of meeting him probably four or five months ago. Jack, thanks for being here, mate. Thanks for having me, Chris. It's a pleasure. I'm really excited. Now... It seems like I can't turn on the TV without seeing you on there. Two days ago, I saw you with Mark Boris. Tell us a bit about what you're doing, how you got started, and a bit about your career to date. Yeah, mate. Well, it's been a, I'd like to say, a pretty big, long one. But at the end of the day, it's only been five or six years, which is pretty incredible. So, mate, if you look at my Instagram, I've got a video of me at eight years old, you know, in a suit and tie in a chair just like this, talking to dad. And he interviewed me about my new business because I rocked in and I was like, dad, I've got this great idea and I want you to talk to me about it. So it was a trucking company. I started with my cousin. I built the whole drag and drop website. It was pretty insane. And I think for me, you know, a lot of what I enjoyed doing on the weekends was, you know, printing out receipts and, you know, writing checks from checkbooks. They didn't understand how it works. Everyone who received a check from me loved it because, you know, I was giving out 20 bucks every weekend <laughs> without even knowing about it. So from there, you know, I'd always, dad started the business 18 years ago, used to be an accountant, sold everything, bought a little tennis center in Everton Park in Brisbane. And I always knew, like, I saw him build that and that was blood, sweat, tears. You know, I did see him cry around, I haven't said this before, but I had, saw him peg a phone, walk out and sob around the block. You know, you don't see him do that very often at all. I've never seen it again. So I always knew that it was going to be hard. So, and I always knew that mum and dad were never going to give me anything. It was always, you know, if you want a car, if you want a phone, if you want it, you've got to buy it yourself. And I think that was a big philosophy that certainly helped me. It pushed me to start the very first business at 12. So I was at the shops one day and I saw, you know, I was buying a gift for a friend and back then used to buy gift cards. I saw the process, the friction between buying gift cards, shipping it, writing in it, posting it. You know, it was a three or four step process. So I synced that all down into one, built the program, you know, advertised through putting flies in people's mailboxes. It was just ridiculous. And that was me at 12 years old on a bike, riding around, putting flies in. You know, I built the drag and drop website. I still have the website today. And to look back then and go, what the hell was I doing? It, you know, it doesn't make logistical sense for a 12 year old to be that driven. But at the end of the day, you know, I didn't care how much money I made out of it, didn't care what I got. I just found it fun. So, and I hope that's not cliche to say, but I think it really was for me enjoyable. So from then did a couple of things and about a year and a half ago, I discovered e-commerce and it was literally through watching YouTube videos. I came across a guy who was talking about his success and what he did and he was importing his products from China. And first things first, I thought, well, why can't I do that? I've got experience in marketing, building stores. And yeah, the next thing happened. Well, I started the store, I spent six months learning from YouTube, had 500 bucks I got from mowing lawns next door, had no money, no experience, no mentor, no help. And I just had to build it from there. And for me, that was incredibly impactful. It taught me a lot, um, you know, a lot of tears, a lot of what the hell am I doing every day, questioning myself, which I'm sure obviously you can relate to. You know, you, you, when you start, you don't know what, what you want, how to get there. The road wasn't, you know, paved for me. So. Scaled it up today. Now it's obviously doing incredibly well. I've had you know the incredible opportunity over the last year to do you know news.com.au, Entrepreneur Magazine, Forbes, you know every uh, Today Show, you know uh, Sunrise, every every. You've major. worked some great icons of Australian business. And worked, yeah, I spoke on stage with Mark Boris, as you, was where we met. Um, Tony Robbins, um, you know, did Gary V. Interviewed Gary just like this about a month and a half ago. And you know, for me, at seventeen to have. Such an incredible, such an incredible opportunities that I get presented with every single day. I hope that I can show that not only can a 17-year-old kid achieve this, but if you're a 35-year-old who wants to do something different, make a change in their life, or you're a 12-year-old kid who wants to start something, you should give yourself permission to actually do it because I feel a lot of people don't. Well, look, what, what's most impressive, I think it's the actions, take that step forward. Mm -hmm. I started my first job when I was 10 selling scratch tickets, which we spoke about briefly. You started mm -hmm. your first business at 12. Mm -hmm. I actually started my first business at 25, so obviously I was a late bloomer. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> the, ability, the ability to have that, that drive at such a young age, what do you think it was? Was it your father that you saw work so hard? Mm -hmm. Was it, I just want to be successful, I want to break out of it? What was it exactly you think that actually gave you that drive? Well, that's a good question because you know, I get the question from a lot of parents very similar to that, which is, you know, my kid doesn't want to do something. Um, for your upbringing, was it, was it genetic or was it taught to you? 
And I think that's a very interesting dynamic, a question that I personally cannot answer because I don't know, because how do you explain a seven-year-old that has more interest in you know, writing out receipts than you know, playing with the other kids in the playground? I don't know. So I think it was certainly a combination of, I knew it was ahead of me, you know, I wasn't the best student. I, you know, the university path was, wasn't looking too bright. I'd always wanted to own a business. I wanted to become successful. I'd love cars, I thought. You know, and the one way that I saw that, you know, successful people did was start businesses. And I thought, well, you know, I've got everything that I need. I've got the internet. I have all this capability at my hands and there's totally no, no reason why I can't start. And it was just a question of, well, how do I start? And that was sit down and give it a crack. And that's what I did. Having that drive, like I've got a son, funny mm -hmm. enough, who's 16 years old, yeah, Jack. I yeah. don't know if you know, I've got four kids. You do, yeah. And you're not an impressive 17 year old. I think you're an impressive full stop. And to see someone your age do so well, I can't wait to follow your career. My biggest thing, as I told you, I hope you surround yourself with fantastic mm -hmm. people, good mentors, which well, I see yourself you're one of them. There you go. Someone that can really help you go to that next level, that can keep you grounded and humble because you're going to do some great things and I'm really looking forward to what you're going to do in your career. Thank you. But being able to, to go into business, when I saw you, what impressed me the most is you're on stage with Mark, I think it was Nick Fordham. Yeah, it was who now manages me as well, yeah. Um, the guy from Red Rose, you were four or five people and you didn't do well there. You actually held your own, you're one of the best well-spoken on stage. And I said, for a 17 year old to be able to answer that quick, for someone to do a TED at 16 years old, it's just so impressive. And what I want, most of my clients have children like your age, like myself. What would you say to the kids out there to actually go out there to be able to give it a go that they're still doing school, they don't even know if they want to work, never mind become a business owner. What would you say to them? Well, mate, I think it's it starts with one simple idea. You know, I never set out with the intention of, you know, making a couple, I always, you know, had that in the back of my head, but I never set out with the intention of making, you know, a couple of million bucks. The idea of doing that was always, you know, kind of grand, but, the reason why I started in the first place was I was bored. I just wanted to start something different. You know, if, whether that idea be a lemonade stand, whether that be gift cards, whether that be whatever it might be. I think that, you know, every single kid has a spark. You know, kids, the optimal time, I think, to start a business, logistically speaking, is when you are under the age of 18. You have no mortgage, you have no kids, you have no credit card debt. You, you know, you've got, you've, you literally can fall a hundred times, get back up and keep going again. And I think for me, I identified that without identifying it directly. I couldn't put it in words, but I always knew that, you know, if I wanted to do something great, I'd have to give it a shot. And a lot of kids, you know, I'm no one special. You know, I'm not class captain. I was never a prefect, certainly not school captain at school. Was always just an average kid who, you know- Were you a good C's. student, Jack? No, no, mate, no. But I always knew that I didn't want to go down that normal educational path. And I think a lot of other kids don't, whether you're a good student, doesn't matter. I think you just got to have a spark, a little idea and just get going from there. You don't need a lot. You know, you just, we, we've got the internet, we've got unlimited capability and that's really powerful for any kid. And I, your I saw your TEDx speak and you're talking a lot about the internet and stuff like that. And being, I guess, young, when I was eight years old, I actually knew that I wanted to own a business and be a business owner. Mm -hmm. I didn't know to what capacity. Mm -hmm. I was always a terrible student but good with maths, I was not interested at school. And I think um, being more curious about business and about learning things mm -hmm. and getting out was the reason I got into business. Mm -hmm. Was money your key motivator or freedom was your what, was, what was your, what was your main motivator to say, you know what, I wanna run a business? I think security, it's a good question. I think security, because for me, I'd always looked at, you know, like I always wanted to know what I was doing. Like I wanted to know in six months time, would I have something there in 12 months, you know, when I'm 25, would I be able to drive a Ferrari or a nice car or have a house? Because that's always something that I'd wanted. And at the end of the day, you know, the thought of, well, maybe, or that could happen, or if I strike gold or if I win the lottery, the idea of that never sat well with me at all. You know, I'd always wanted something that I knew that if I worked hard enough at this one single idea, it would give me the possibility to go ahead and achieve all these different things. And for me, that was incredibly powerful. I identified that very young and the business was, no, security and it meant that if I knew I had one path if I did this well then all these other opportunities can unlock and yeah it just went from there. You did mention it's been easier as, as a kid and I do agree in certain stages if you're under 18 it's easier you've got no mortgage you live at home no it's no expenses sense, and yes. you've got no kids but there's also not a lot of other challenges that you face mm -hmm. which you mentioned to me so I'd like you to mention to our viewers what those challenges are because 
being under 18, not being able to drive, not being able to do certain things, obviously opens other challenges. Oh. And then when you discuss that, I want to say, where there's a will, there's a way. So you never saw a challenge, you saw a way to go forward. So what were those challenges, first of all? Yeah, well, I think even when you talk about challenges, no matter what stage of life you're at, you're always going to have challenges. You know, whether it be the mortgage, the kids, and that, that's a later stage of a challenge. Starting a business under the age of 18 presents its fair share of unique ones, as we were speaking about earlier, which number one, you know, the idea that I'm down here in Melbourne, the biggest issue is a lot of people don't. And whenever I say this, people go, oh, really? Is that a thing? You can't check into a hotel under the age of 18. So yeah, the amount of, you know, that's just traveling. You know, you can get over that. But when it comes to running a business, you know, you can't set up a business bank account under 18 years old. You can't even get, you know, a personal debit card till you're 16. So I think it's, you know, it's, it's very, very, very interesting. And my biggest thing is obviously I talk a lot about education, business building at a young age and all that sort of stuff. I think that a lot of kids get bogged down in the idea of, oh, well, how am I going to pay tax or how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? How am I going to sort this out because I'm all under 18? I think you've just got to really, if you've got an idea and you have the will to go out there and just give it a shot, the rest you can figure out later. But if you don't have any money coming in, you don't have a product you can sell, you don't have a service to provide to someone, there's no point thinking about, oh, how am I going to get this business registered? Because you can you know, get your mum to do it, you can get your uncle to do it, you can get someone to do it. You'll figure it out. But I think, yeah, get your priorities straight would be my biggest advice. It's something that I didn't really understand and a lot of other kids I find don't too. They get so bogged down, they get so you know, incapacitated because they, the thought of you know, starting anything seems so scary. And yeah, I realized that and it just really went from there, which was oh, I think was really lucky that I figured it out. And I think a lot of people under 18 years old, they, they're just trying to live their life or be under 18. They're not focused on business mm -hmm. or spend that time because you obviously go to school still, don't you, Jack? Mm -hmm. I do, yeah, grade 12. We got two or three months left. So how do you mix in running a business, going to school and doing everything you do? Because obviously you've got to sacrifice somewhere. So I don't, I imagine that your social life won't, won't be that, you won't have that much time for that, would you? Yeah, well that certainly does get a bit decreased, unfortunately, um, you know, I, but I think at the, at the end of the day, going to school has probably been the one thing that's kept me so you know, grounded and humble and all that sort of stuff. Because, you know, being in Australia, as you know, if you start a business and do something wildly successful, a lot of people are going to try to bring you down. And you go to a school that, you know, is a relatively, it's a really good school in Brisbane. Um, you know, all the other kids who are trying to become successful themselves in their own right or capacity will see someone who's done better and they're going to try to pull them back down. So I've had a good experience at school, which is great. But the only reason why is because, you know, I don't talk about it. I keep it under the radar. You know, obviously outside of it, it's incredibly well publicized. But for me, it keeps me grounded, keeps me humble. And I think at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't matter how much money you're making, it can change tomorrow. Something can happen, you know, for me, a Facebook algorithm can go haywire and I won't make any money tomorrow. And I think that it's incredibly important to remain humble, know that you're under 18, know that you're at any age, that something could happen tomorrow. It could all be taken away from you. And it's the relationships at the end of the day that you have with people that can save you. And if you don't, you've got nothing else. Well, look, I rebuilt my career at an early age because I went from actually losing it all I was in debt of 348,000 to starting my first business. Relationships is key, but what you build, and I think momentum and drive is everything. So if you did lose everything for me, commas, I'm 100% sure you're gonna find something else with your drive to succeed. No doubt. And having the ability to be able to step forward and move forward is everything, mm -hmm. which is something that you've got in spades. So Thank you. I think the challenges that the kids face at school is, I don't think they wanna put the work in. I know they put it, there's a negative stigmatism with mm -hmm. millennials. You're a prime example that there's a lot of millennials out there that are willing to work and to do things different. I think I think if you give a kid the opportunity to go ahead and try something, you know, a lot of kids, as we, I, I would, I would stick behind the saying that I believe through and through that kids are the generation, you know, whether that be 20 years ago or now, kids are the ones who have, you know, groundbreaking ideas. They have the most incredible ideas out of any generation because they're not afraid of all the external input of, oh, this sounds stupid or this isn't viable. They don't care. They just come up with these great things but they don't give them a shot. And I think when you when people say that, oh, you know, kids are lazy or kids don't try as hard as, you know, they're adults or as, you know, 30 year olds, you know, the kids are in school. They're not forced to do anything. They're literally just got to sit there and be spoon fed. I mean, they're not really forced to do anything apart from that. And you're raising kids who, you know, are effectively going to be put into a cookie cutter education system who at the end of the day are just going to be spat out. And I think you know, it's really an unfortunate to see. But, you know, as we all know, as soon as you know, kids leave school, the idea of, the overwhelming sense of the world in terms of, oh, now I've got rent, now I've got credit card, now I've got all this other stuff, I've got to find a job. 
And I think that, you know, as kids can go through, you know, primary school to grade 12 and they can have it pretty cruisy and you can get by. But I think as soon as you finish school and the weight of the world starts to weigh down on you, that's where a lot of kids start to get their act together, which I think is really powerful. Just for example, you know, uh, a lot of kids that finished last year who, you know, I thought would be, you know, kind of the kids, you know, you get the sense of where you don't think you can really do anything or just, you know, kind of just flatline and then maybe kick it into gear at 30. A lot of them are DMing me now. I never spoke to them last year asking, you know, how do you start an e-commerce business? I want to start marketing a product on Facebook, which just is incredibly humbling, incredibly groundbreaking. And I think it shows that no matter what sort of kid goes through high school, they're a completely different person as soon as they finish. So if that helps put that into context, I think perspective for the audience as well, I think, yeah, if that's done a good, if I've done a good job of that, then yeah. I think you've done an amazing job of that and you're someone people can look up to. But I think within schools, I saw a TEDx speak mm-hmm. about it actually, yeah. that um, schools kill productivity, they skill cre- creativity mm-hmm. because they don't teach you to fail. I think the two most important things that I've learned in business yeah. is accepting failure is a good thing because you're gonna learn yeah. and forward momentum is everything in business. So when you said, I just want to take a step forward, as long as you put one step ahead of the other every single day, the sky's the limit. If you hang around with good people, which you obviously are and are doing, I think you're gonna reach great heights. So, and you mentioned before people's success, I go the exact opposite. I love and thrive on seeing people like yourself do well, especially at your age, because I think it's, we should celebrate success and it also motivates people and inspires people. Exactly too, and I think it's unfortunate that, you know, you look at America, like, you know, I, I and I know a lot of people agree, you know, if you drive a Ferrari down the street here in Australia, the reaction you're gonna get is probably not too positive. A couple of guys might congratulate you, but overwhelming majority are gonna try to pull you down. You go to the US and it's a completely different mindset. You know? It would be disappointing though, a Every- Ferrari, not a Lamborghini. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. not a fan of the Lamborghini. <laughs> yeah, all right, we'll put in the, let's say Lambo. Oh. You drive a Lambo down, you know, in Beverly Hills or whatever, and people, the first question they ask is, what does that guy do? How did that guy get here? But if you look here in Australia, it's probably, who did that guy rip off or what a wanker or something along the lines of that, which is, which is incredibly unfortunate, but I think it reflects a lot of, you know, the Australian society itself. It's changing, which is great. But I think, you know, the more successful individuals that we have, the more importantly too, don't just have a level of success, but are willing to share with others, not just how they achieved it, but how they got there in terms of what were they doing at 17 years old, which for a lot of them are very similar to the average Australian, but how do they transfer that mindset? How did they actually go ahead and, you know, take nothing and build something? I think the more stories, you know, there's plenty of stories of that in Australia, but the more people like Mark Boris who come out and show not just what they do today, but how they got there, it's going to help so many Australians. I'm trying to do that. And I think that, yeah, if if anyone with an open mind is willing to listen, learn from not just myself, but, you know, guys who have done significantly better than I have, like Mark, for example, as you know, if you get a mentor, it can change everything. And I think the more Australians that we have leading by example, it's going to change everything. Having a business coach is very important. I just want to add one funny story before we wrap up. I remember I was 25, I just bought a new Audi convertible and I was yep. driving down Chapel Street and we stopped at a red light. Some guy looked at me and he goes, nice car, did daddy buy it for you? Mm-hmm. And I looked at him and I said, yes. My cousin said, why did you say that? I said, I, I don't really care what they think. When I see a young person in a nice car, my first thought is, I really hope they made it themselves and they're successful because that's how I like to think. But other people straight away think that it was given. So I find that a very interesting point. But yeah. look, Jack, I wish you all the best. And to everyone out there that inspires to be as impressive as Jack, good luck for all your career. I'm going to be following it eagerly. Hope everyone else is. And I can't wait to see you succeed Thanks, even Chris. further, mate. Thank you. Thanks for having me.